Hello there and uh, welcome back to my kitchen garden. I have to make several tries each day to just to reach out because the connection is not this good. I um, It feels like it gets worse when it's very windy outside. I don't know if that's true but I hang on, keep on making uh, tries until I succeed and hopefully uh, I am live now and you can watch me. It's um, a bit after lunchtime in Sweden at the moment and um, that some of you watching from like New Zealand and I was told yesterday that you are 12 hours ahead of me um, or us here in Sweden so it will be in the middle of the night for you but hopefully you can watch this afterwards. If you want to uh, I will be happy if you write something to say that you are here and maybe you could uh, write something about where you are watching from where you are gardening for example. I live in Sweden, in south parts of Sweden and behind me you can see a part of my, hi Nina, <laughs> of my kitchen garden. It's such a beautiful day today, it's, it's still very windy, it's fall-like you know and we have had a bit of rain but not very cool today so it's, I can be out gloves for example, it's very pleasant and uh, we have an amazing sky today with plenty of um, uh, clouds and actually my kids yesterday when we had been out for a walk they were lying here on their back <laughs> on top of this uh, um, pile or whatever and they were looking up in the sky and checking all the the clouds and it's amazing to see you know the, the little boy he's only two years old uh, and how he get to experience the clouds and they were so excited about it. Thank you all for watching. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's really nice to do those live streams because uh, it makes me feel less, I don't know what to say, less lonely in the garden. I really like to have my blog, my two blogs, um, and to share what I do in the garden because most of the time, or I mean it's pretty much all the time, I don't have anyone to spend time with in the garden except my children. And I don't have time to go out and, and watching other people's gardens. I only I check videos on <laughs> YouTube and I love it. And I hope you enjoy uh, following my kitchen garden too. So um, I, I really appreciate when you give me small comments and write uh, something about your own garden. It makes me, yeah, it makes me feel a connection, uh, and I really like that. I uh, said in um, the beginning of this week, this is my project. We're doing one live stream each week, uh, and I have kept up with that so far. It's an ugly thing laying there, but the children using it to get uh, the last apples on the tree. I would try not to. Well, there's ugly things in the picture <laughs> all over the place. Well, that's how things are. Uh, anyhow, I was told um, in the beginning of this week uh, that I would try to pick up one question uh, each day from you. And yesterday I had several questions uh, on my video and I think that I will not manage to answer all of them in the same video during the week. So I will try to catch up and answer all of them in one like a Q&A video later on. But today it was very suitable, so to say. I hear the children inside the house. They have just finished lunch. We'll see what they will <laughs> come up <laughs> with. They seem to have fun. Uh, I was sent a question from uh, Maria in New Zealand. Right. I have seen you make bokashi soil, which has inspired me to do the same. What do you fill all your pots in polytunnel with? Do you make enough bokashi to fill them all? And I actually had several questions about bokashi compost, so I will try to write more about that in a blog post. I know that many people are interested in this. And first of all, very quickly, um, for you who may not know anything about bokashi compost, this is a way to transform your, uh, transform your kitchen waste to um, 
to uh, well to soil I see I should have started with a dog of course Diana thank you <laughs> uh, I didn't quite see oh I may find um, yeah now I see your question right how is my dog feeling he is better we have a Newfoundland dog and he was uh, hurt the other day uh, you got well I don't know exactly what happened, but he got hurt and he uh, would not lay down or sit down for about uh, 24 hours. It was horrible. And he was like breathing like this <laughs> all the time. And he only wanted to stay close, 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 close. But uh, the vet couldn't tell what was wrong with him. And he got home uh, yesterday and he had some medications to still the pains. and. Um, something else and he just crashed on the floor and you you who have like a newfoundland dog you know what it's like when they are just <laughs> they fall asleep in the most incredible uh, ways and uh, bad places so he put himself uh, uh, just behind a door <laughs> uh, that was crazy all day long but we were very happy to have him home and now he's back he's happy so really it's, it's really really nice so now you all know that he is better Thank you for asking. Well, Bokashi compost, it's a way to, um, well, practically you, you f make a fermentation um, with your kitchen waste and you turn it into compost by using uh, a specific type of microorganisms that you uh, put in your kitchen waste. And by doing that, oh, very quick airplane somewhere. Anyhow, uh, when you have made your bokashi compost you can actually uh, dig it down in your soil um, in the ground directly and you would not have to you know use a, an ordinary compost um, heap because it will transform to soil directly in, into the soil. So it's, it's very useful because it gives me less work by turning an ordinary compost. So I make uh, Bokashi compost with all my uh, kitchen waste. And um, I use it in several ways in my, uh, in my garden. I have um, some vegetables that are very, you would say, hungry. They need uh, a lot of nutrition, like corn and we have the brassicas and uh, garlic, for example. It's very windy. I try to protect the microphone. So I try to use it in places where I am growing those vegetables that are hungry. Um, in my main kitchen garden, I have, I have perfect soil. Um, I made a blog post about the result of a um, soil analysis that I made uh, from my soil, just to find out how the soil have been affected by me using the mulching technique not giving the soil any, um, what would you say, <laughs> like um, a manure from animals. I only use uh, organic materials that I put on my uh, soil as a mulch. And I also dig down a lot of organic material, plant material and compost, um, Bukashi compost. And the result was, they showed that it's, I, I cannot do anything more, I can't do anything better than I already do. There's a blog post about this at sarahbackman.com and you will find it if you search for like analysis or something like that. So it's, it's uh, very, very good uh, using this technique. But what I do have in my polytunnel, for example, is uh, I, I use pots to grow some kind of vegetables because it's, uh, it's a nice way to fit in things in my polytunnel that I can't fit in the garden beds, for example, that I have in the polytunnel. If the wind is very disturbing you have to say so please <laughs> so that i can move uh, to an um i brought with me pots from my polytunnel and uh, i use this type of pots and even big bigger um, and this was what the question was all about from maria um, what do you fill all your pots in the polytunnel with? <laughs> do you have enough Bokashi compost? So 
we are six people in our household and we produce like one bucket um, um, of five uh, liters of bocaccia compost each day so that will make about one two or maybe even three uh, 10 liters buckets with compost finished compost every week so yes I have plenty of compost and I can um, produce compost to fill all my bokashi um, pots so what I do I have shown in another video that I put some uh, organic uh, material from the garden in the bottom uh, of the pot right 10 centimeters or so and then I fill up with a whole bucket even more in bigger pots with the bokashi compost and then I put a layer on top with soil um, yeah from from uh, another pot or from uh, from the kitchen garden somewhere and then I grow in this and this is how it looks now when when I have grown one season and you can see that there are not well it, it's not filled up um, the whole pot not anymore but I was thinking that we would later on try to empty a pot like this and see what happened with the um, with the compost this is only is it like um, maybe I filled this one in like May or June oh, a couple of months ago and I am always very excited <laughs> when I am uh, going to empty a pot like this. I think it's amazing. So I basically I don't have to buy any soil for pots like this. Hi Misha! <laughs> uh, I can produce all the soil that is needed for my pots uh, by using my bokashi compost and my garden waste really. And I think that is the, the way we should use our compost um, and not buying soil um, in the store actually. Now we leave the Bokashi compost for a few minutes and I will show you my big pleasure this time of year. So now we are entering a new season in the garden and until now I have put all my energy in growing vegetables in all kind of uh, places that I have in both my polytunnels and in the main kitchen garden, etc, etc. And there is something that I like specifically <laughs> with gardening. It's almost like a drug and it makes me very happy. And that is to create new garden beds. I am not satisfied at all with what I have. Well, I am satisfied in one way, but I want more. And I know this uh, is something that um, all of you may be hit by <laughs> one time or another. And um, yeah, so I have this garden and I think that if this is, I mean, the most, the best thing I, I can fill my time with, if I enjoy it really, really much, then why should I stop? Why, why not do all the things I like? So I create new spaces all the time. And a couple of years ago, me and my husband, we were sitting under this apple tree. Uh, and it's nice when it's, uh, you can use this space too. And uh, before that, I was not allowed to use this uh, space because he wanted us to have a lawn where the children could play, really. And in my opinion, the children are more happier um, with having, you know, funny garden a funny garden and so I, I started and now you can see there are <laughs> places all over there the garden and I grow things everywhere unfortunately I think it's so nice to do all those places so I don't really think about the like design for the garden but for me that's not very important now because my my time I don't have much time because I have four small children and I work quite a lot so I am thinking that it's more important for me to create uh, those garden beds now because it makes me happy and later on when I have more time I can do the you know the details and what I have in mind uh, specifically is um, 
how do you say it? Well, an ID. Oh, it's a plane again. Oh, it's over here. It's amazing. You know when you. It's so very, very fast, so that the sound is way behind the plane. <laughs> Anyhow, I watch several videos about gardening each week, of course, and I like to watch Monty Don. He's a very competent gardener. I don't want to be like Monty Don. I don't want to have a Monty Don garden, but um, in one way or another, there's plenty of good tips. Very noisy <laughs> and one thing that I have learned and if I get to do another garden sometimes my god I don't know if you can hear that what well, I will definitely keep this in mind and what he says is that when you do a new garden <laughs> yeah it's a jazz plant something like that it's very intense noise. Uh, anyhow, when you create a new garden, you should not um, focus on like the garden beds. You should focus on the, the pathways. Um, and all area that are not the pathways are garden beds. So in this area, for example, I will turn the camera. I simply created this bed we call it the banana it's a banana shape <laughs> and then I wanted to have something quickly underneath the tree and then I wanted something quickly underneath this tree <laughs> and then I wanted something quickly over here so I simply did it but in my next garden life I will do a pathway and then I will create garden beds all over the place uh, on the sides of this pathway so for now I will just leave it and in a couple of years time I will do the pathways right so this plot here was until a couple of days ago the children's uh, kitchen garden with raised beds and we have in Sweden something that we call palette color it's very very useful and it's very very popular and this is a palette collar and it could be like put together but when you do like this so it's it's basically a frame that you put over um, a palette and you could transport different kinds of things in it when I was a child, my father was a boat builder and he got, you know, the big motors, um, engine, engines, um, and they were packed in things like this. But you actually fill it with like compost or things and you can grow in it. So it's a very nice way to, to, to quickly create a, a new space to grow vegetables in. And until a couple of uh, days ago, this area was filled with six palette colors and the children had two each and then the little boy had <laughs> this very small one the, the bigger children made it for him right so what i did a couple of years ago was to put up the palette colors and i then filled it with weed and different organic material from the kitchen garden it was like old brassica stems and uh, leaves and grass uh, clippings and whatever but mainly weed from uh, well all part of the garden and in a couple of years all of this transformed to i mean the best soil you can ever get look here in like two years ago this was plant material it's amazing right and again I don't need to buy my soil because I can create it in the garden only by using things that are actually produced in the garden 
And my children, they have had a wish for several years. And uh, it has been, they want to have a real kitchen garden, a big area where they can, where they can work as farmers. <laughs> they, have, they want to use their tools um, I don't know exactly the name <laughs> of all the tools they have got, but they want to, you know, work with their bodies. They want to hit the ground and they want to dig things and they want to... It's, it's amazing. They have so much energy and they want, to, they want to farm this land, right? So I have promised them for several years that we will make them a farm, a mini farm. And so we did a couple of years, uh, days ago when we actually removed all the palette colors and we put paper a uh, newspaper on the ground. You can see some of it here uh, to cover the grass um, between the palette colors. And then they uh, remove the palette colors and they uh, sort of um, organize the soil <laughs> over this area. And they have already started to grow things. They have planted leek and strawberries and garlic and bulbs for summer flowers. So all this really without digging anything, only using material that this garden already produced. Most people put it on a compost heap and I think that is totally not <laughs> doable in this garden. Uh, I have a compost outside the bigger polytunnel and I use it only for waste from the, uh, from the polytunnel and that is because it's way too far for me to carry this material to the rest of the garden because uh, it takes plenty of time and uh, when I have a few minutes left and I am out uh, for example with my youngest boy he is only two years old I mean <laughs> I will spend the whole day walking <laughs> to one place or another and it's it's not good enough so what I do is that now in fall for example I create new garden beds so now when I don't have to uh, weed and I don't have to plant so many things I spend my time doing new projects. Here you can see the little farmer. Hey Vigo! So this is an area in the garden. I have struggled with it for years and years. It's um, long before I bought this house. The main entrance to this house and the barn um, be, um, on, on the, the back of the house, in the garden. This was the main entrance. So you behind, um, in between those big trees, you could go with uh, a horse, <laughs> for example, and this wall continued all the way to the trees. And the, uh, the way down to the barn, it was here. Whee! and then continued on the other side. This means that there's no soil here in the ground. It's, it's only, it's very hard, you know, packed. So you can't dig here, you can't do anything. Uh, I tried once to put on a layer of uh, soil, but it was not enough. So I have grow, um, plant, I planted like perennials, but it's, very very dry and it's very hot here in summertime so I have just given up that it doesn't work but I can create new garden beds surprise and that's what I'm doing uh, so I have simply put up palette colors and what I do since this is a place where it grows plenty of weed I don't know exactly the name of this but it's a grass it's horrible <laughs> But it's very easy to, um, uh, not to remove, but to, well, you, I don't know if you say you choke it. Kväva. So I put a layer of newspapers in the bottom. I put up, here you can see, a palette color. And then I put newspapers in the bottom. 
Here's another plane. Hopefully far away. I put a layer of uh, newspapers in the bottom to choke the weed and also the perennials that are still left. I tried to remove some of them. And then I put my wheat in here. I have two uh, palette colors on top. Right? So I pack this, I walk on this to pack it. And I want to fill it. I, I'm thinking I will just show you how I do this. That's the point with this. So I fill it with several things and I want to fill all of it. So I brought with me a few things because it's not um, enough like weed or plant material here at the moment. So here's a bucket of I don't know what. And I simply turn it into here and I can tell you I work really quickly if I can use two hands <laughs> I mean this is basically a compost here are things that I don't like, what kind of, do you call it maggots or lar larves? They eat my vegetables later on, so I remove them. I have some grass clippings. I collect things in bags all the time. Leaves and wool and grass clippings, things that I can find in my gardens, in gardens next to me. <laughs> right, so I'll just walk in this to pack this a bit. Dun, dun, dun. This is very good for children to do as well. They like it. I don't allow them to. Yeah, you call them grubs. Grubs. And chickens love them, yes. I actually um, killed all my chickens when we had, when our youngest was young, one year old, uh, because they were like infected with something. and. In Sweden, we breastfeed our babies, most of us quite long. And it was a problem for me because I handled the chickens and then I had to breastfeed uh, my baby. And those nasty things from the chickens jumped over to the uh, child. It was horrible. Newspapers. I collect newspapers as well. And I don't mind if they, um, if they stay outside and they get wet because they are even better when they are wet. And now I show you the next part. And you see if I if I do one thing like this each day I get my exercise <laughs> and I get plenty of things done as well in the garden. Neighbors, they, they love to get rid of newspapers because they only have to drive them uh, to my place and it's Leif next to me who supplies with me with newspapers. While doing this I can tell you some about my philosophy about garden work. You know, I don't have time really to do plenty of things at one time. Uh, I am I'm busy <laughs> indoors mainly and taking care of the children and laundry and whatever. So 
in my case, I think it's, it's better for me to do one garden thing each day. And that's how I manage to run this garden. I don't have to be an like, expert and having plenty of time really. For now it's, it's good enough to have half an hour, a few minutes to do one garden project each day. And yesterday my garden project was to go with the children and collect uh, char, I think you say. Because I had seen that one of my neighbors, they had made a fire. Hello Birgit. Thank you for watching. Well, my neighbors, they made a fire and big pile of char in the garden. And I have seen that. So I was thinking, wow, I, they were not home, so I couldn't ask them, unfortunately. So I said to my children that we will go and get that pile. Oh, we are stealing it, they said. Yeah, we do that. But what are we going to do with the pile, with the char? I'm going to pee on it. <laughs> and the children went, what? <laughs> they will remember crazy things from their mother. Stealing char and peeing on it. And that is, uh, I will try to make this biochar for the garden. I have never used that before because I don't want to buy um, that product. It seems unnecessary. Uh, so now I will write a blog post of that. Uh, two, of course. So this is what I have done. Oh, from Germany. Oh, I'm so excited that you watch from all over the world. It's so funny. Right, so I have put a layer of um, newspapers on top. And why did I do that? Simply because if I don't do that, there's a risk that the weed will start to grow. Um, and I will prevent that. And I do that by simply adding newspapers um, and that will sort of choke and kill the weed underneath. And now comes the funny part then. We hope you are ex as excited. <laughs> um, yes, uh, um, Pusang, you say you use biochar and you pee on it too. And that's what I'm going to do as well. So I will keep the, uh, the char in a bucket and I will put my urine on it. And um, well, I boost it with the nutritions. Uh, and Nina asked me now if I don't remove the small metal things here in the, in the paper. I did the first year or so, but I don't do it anymore. And um, my argument is basically that it it takes too much time and I know it's not 100% good for the soil but the soil will repeat and they will take care of it and uh, I am not afraid that uh, we will sort of eat the metal things um, it will uh, it will um, stay um, underneath uh, oh, I don't know how to put it uh, deep in this bed so it's no risk that we will eat it all right. No. Sometimes when working and doing things, uh, like two things at the same time, I feel like a big elephant. <laughs> Here, I think I have grown like an eggplant aubergine in this. And here you can see signs of me using bokashi. I think this is a chicken. And they are not that strong. <laughs> uh, I will try to break it for you. If I can. Oh. You can see. It's almost like, yeah. It's decomposing. It's very nice. Now I will take this one. And I will turn it. This is quite funny actually because one of the questions I had the other day was about maggots. <laughs> and here you can see 
all types of I don't mind about these really. I think they will freeze in a couple of weeks. Here are some more. I think it's chicken. But you see no signs except some egg shells or whatever. And this, so this was our kitchen waste. Oh, here's my little princess. Alba runs fast. Woohoo! I think they are going on an adventure. So there's one bucket. We'll take the next one. Eggs. Some newspaper. Nothing left. A root system. And while emptying another bucket, I see that Molly asked me if there's anything that I do not like decompose in my garden uh, that I throw away. And yes, I throw away uh, like leaves from potatoes and tomatoes that were um, damaged by this blight, um, pota potato blight. Um, if I see that, I, I put it in a fire or I... Uh, throw it in in the garbage bin here's many many roots in this one this one i mean it's not so easy to make new sowings in soil that consists of this so i simply put it in the next bin <laughs> And then there's the last one. It's amazing, isn't it? This was like oranges and banana shells. And I even decomposed like uh, seashells. And now it's all healthy soil. It's not enough really, I, I need a few more buckets to this project, but this is a good way to show you a nice way to create a new kitchen garden. But, so in just a short while I can create four of these uh, in my garden, not buying any material uh, and the best thing is that when I have filled it up with, let's say, two more buckets of uh, uh, compost, I can actually start making new sowings. So from one day, sorry about this, <laughs> from one day to another, I can make a bed that will produce uh, several kilos of spinach uh, very early in the season. Uh, I can maybe try to transplant um, chard, Swiss chard, from another part in the, uh, in the garden and put it here and make it over winter uh, underneath a simple lid of plastic, for example. So, I mean, working with two hands, not talking at the same time, I will do that for like seven minutes. It, it won't take me long at all to create this bed. And this is something that I try to do all autumn long because it's a, I prepare new garden beds to, to make new sowings in winter, for example, winter sowings. It's amazing. And I, I'm, I'm, it makes me happy. You know, a bit dirt on my hands. <laughs> I stand here underneath the apple tree, for example. I have plenty of apples. And what I do, I collect them and I put them in the bin. And then I cover it with newspapers and soil. And I make new garden beds. So all of this area in the north part of uh, our garden are made the same way. And I think I increased my, my vegetable garden by doing this one year with like 50 square meter in only a couple of weeks. Not buying anything, not digging anything, just cover the lawn um, with paper, cardboard and put in my garden 
well, the, the waste on top. And the soil is so nice. I can actually show you. Yes, I will show you. Now, uh, at the end, I will go get my spade. Um, I have, I don't know if I have told you this in English, in the English channel, but there's one thing that I like to do. <laughs> uh, and I take um, something, um, a pin, I don't know the name of it in, yeah, but like this. And I simply push it into the ground and I watch how far I can get <laughs> and then I measure it and uh, sometimes in, in one bed without digging anything I could uh, come down to like 40 centimeters and then I'm very happy and then I go to the next place and I could go down to 70 centimeters and then I'm even happier. Uh, all of this created um, by not digging anything I just cover the, the ground. Here is a bed that I created just exactly the same way as I did over here last year. And I have grown cabbage in here. So until, let's say, last spring, it was all weed here and a small layer of top uh, on, of soil on top. And you see, I can dig down here and you will not find anything strange in here. <laughs> it's just soil. Nice, isn't it? Oi. And I think if I... I saw several of uh, uh, worms in here too, but they sort of disappeared. <laughs> There's small worms in Sweden. We call them like compost worms. And they are small and they are red. And they are very fast. And they actually produce manure directly into the ground. So all of this soil consists of like warm manure. And if you have many worms in your soil, it's a good soil. So you should feed the worms and take good care of them. Right. So to do this job, you don't you don't have to have any machines. You don't have to have much money to create a garden. You don't have to have plenty of time. You don't even have to have plenty of ideas. I mean, you can only go out having a few minutes in the garden with or without children, <laughs> day or night, <laughs> winter or summer. And you could create yourself new garden beds so you can get more space to grow food. It's, it's really nice. And I do this all the time. It makes me happy. Now it's time to finish for today and uh, if you want to you can check the other parts. Uh, thank you Eva Madeleine. Hope you are having a nice day and can create some new garden beds as well. If you want to you can check the other parts from this week um, in my playlist uh, at YouTube live or live stream. I, I can't remember which one it is and I would be happy if you subscribe my channel of course and if you Give me a thumb up for this video. I can see plenty, uh, many people watching, but I want to see thumbs up. <laughs> and uh, you can read more about my kitchen garden and uh, the way I garden in an easy way, along with my children, at sarabakmo.com, the English blog, and sarabakmo.se at the Swedish blog. Thank you all for watching and see you tomorrow. Uh, Tomorrow I think I will be doing my live show quite early in the morning if the weather allows me to do that. Um, so you, if you subscribe you will have a notification uh, when I put on my camera. Thank you for today and thank you for watching. Bye.